Saiyan Army. Matt Keto, Goku Flex. Check it in. And today's video is a video that I've been asked to do for a while now. It's a really touchy subject, so I was kind of on the ropes about making this video. But here we go. So, first off, this is the question is how do I deadlift and squat with a bulging disc? First thing I'm going to tell you guys is if you guys have a bulging disc, herniated disc, any type of injuries, bad back, go see your doctor. Go see your doctor, ask him, okay? This is just my opinion <clears throat> and my advice, advice from my experience. Okay, secondly, you do not have to deadlift or squat to have a good physique. There are a lot of guys out there with great physiques who don't deadlift and squat. So you don't need to do it. Don't feel peer pressured by your friends that you have to squat. Oh, if you don't squat, you're a pussy. If you don't deadlift, you're a pussy. Fuck that. Safety first, okay? Remember why we're in this. We're in this for longevity, to live long, healthy, aesthetic lives, okay? And so I'm just gonna tell you guys my story. So when I was 16 years old, when before YouTube or any of this was around, we just had the Arnold Encyclopedia book to read, I started squatting. I started squatting wrong, which ended up with me injuring my back and getting a bulging disc. So I went to the doctor and I pretty much couldn't do anything that put strain on my lower back for about a year, over a year actually. So I couldn't do anything from bend over rows, anything. Um, for a year straight. After that, my lower back healed up. I still stayed away from anything lower back for a while after that just because I was scared. Alright, so fast forward a couple years later, I wanted to start squatting and, dead, and deadlifting. Well, I didn't even want to deadlift, I just started squatting at first. And so I started squatting and I would jump under the bar, I would just have like lightweight, like maybe like 45 pound plates and stuff. And I would jump under, I would come down into the hole, and I would just hear a k And <laughs> I would rack the weight, and immediately after, I'd feel my lower back just start swelling up. And I would rush home, have to ice that bitch, and I was pretty much out of the gym for the next week or two. And it was bad, I would go see the doctor again, the doctor would tell me again, hey, no, no deadlifting, no squatting, don't put pressure on your lower back, you don't want to herniate the disc, blah blah blah, and you know, And but I'm stubborn, so the same thing would happen again and again, and this went on for years, years and years, and it wasn't until last year where I finally got it. I learned how to overcome this. And the reason why, I, my personal reason why, I like to squat and deadlift even though I shouldn't be because all it takes is one bad squat, one bad deadlift, you herniate that disc or you, I don't know, or you just mess up your back even more and then you're out for like another year, you get surgery and it's hell from there. You know, the risk is really high. That's why I tell you guys, you guys don't need a squat and deadlift, okay? My reason for it is I don't like being told you can't do something. For me, personally, can't is not in my vocabulary. All those doctors that told me I can't squat, I can't deadlift, I can't do anything that puts strain on my lower back, pisses me off. When someone tells me I can't do something, I do everything I can to do it, and that's why I kept injuring it. All right, so let's get into the goods. Okay? Three steps, three ways that I'm able to squat and deadlift. Step number one is work on your mobility and flexibility. Okay, first off, I started foam rolling. Whoa, all right, focus. All right, I started foam rolling. So get a foam roller. This is a rumble roller. It's pretty intense. You don't have to start with a rumble roller. You can start with like a trigger point or any other type, even the black foam rollers. This is my foam roller that I use every day. I roll my back every day, twice a day. I'll make another video showing you my lower body warm up and also how I loosen up my lower back in another video because this one's already gonna go kind of long. All right, so I foam roll every day, twice a day. Okay, so that's and secondly is flexibility. 
make sure you have the mobility in your hamstrings, the flexibility in your hamstrings to get down to get proper depth, to get the proper, not depth, but the proper form for your deadlift, all right? Make sure your hips are loose. Do lots of hip stretches. A lot of the reason why I couldn't squat in the beginning was because I had tight hips. And it wasn't until I started stretching and loosening up my hips that I could start getting down deep in my hole and keep and focus on sitting on my heels. When you squat, you always want to stay on your heels. The moment you roll onto your toes, your knees come forward, putting a lot of pressure on your knees and forces you to good morning the weight up. Okay, putting you in a bad position, putting all that weight on your lower back. Okay? So that's step number one, mobility and flexibility. Work on that first. All right, step number two is warm-ups. The foam rolling like we just talked about. Foam rolling, I have a whole dynamic warm-up that I go through for my lower back and my legs and my hips and everything. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes before every leg session. So, and I'll sh like I said earlier, I'll shoot another video explaining my whole dynamic warm-up. Okay, once that's up, I'll link it right below. So make sure you warm up good. That's just the tone for your whole workout is how you warm up. And that's personally how I feel. The more loose I can um, make my hips and lower back, the better squat session I have, the better deadlift session I have, the better I feel. Okay? And step number three is start slowly. This is a problem that I had too when I first started. I was like, fuck, starting with, you know, one, start, fuck, starting with 135 on the bar and trying to rep that out. You know, I just want to go to two plates and three plates and blah, blah, blah. Start slowly, be patient. Okay? It's not a race. Fitness is not a race. It's not a sprint. We're not sprinting to the finish line. It's a journey. Okay, so start slowly. What I started doing first is I started doing the what's it called? The back hyperextension machine. So the back hyperextension machine is the machine where pretty much it braces all the way up to your hips and you come down and you lift your head up. You kind of look like a seal, I guess. But I would start with that and just slowly start strengthening up my lower back. I would start with body weight, then I started with 10 pounds and I would up it until my lower back got used to, to getting worked. Then, you know, I would start squatting. Squatting, I started really light. I don't care if you have to start with the bar. Start somewhere and slowly work your way up. For me, if you guys look back to my older videos, I have videos where I'm still deadlifting like three plates, 365. St work your way up nice and slow, okay? I hit 415, I just hit 425 yesterday. And it's just five to 10 pound jumps. Just start really slow. Do not rush the process. Let your lower back is one of the slowest healing muscles on your body. So when you hit it, okay, it takes a long time to heal. So make sure you let it heal, get rested, you keep it nice and loose, keep it healthy, and you just slowly strengthen it, slowly strengthen it, just like any other muscle, except this one is even more so, okay? And that's the three steps how I'm able to squat and deadlift. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Like I said, this is all just advice in the end. Like the Hodgman say, do whatever the fuck you want to do. And, you know, let's just all be healthy and safe and keep healthy, strong lower backs. All right. Much love, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Aloha. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! Immortal!